there, welcome over here to my kitchen today. I couldn't be more excited about this video I'm sharing with you. I'm gonna be showing you some of my family's favorite recipes using Bisquick, this shortcut ingredient. So all of these recipes are extremely simple, but they all taste delicious. Anyways, I hope you enjoy it and let's go get to cooking. To get us started off, we're going to be making this breakfast quiche. This is probably one of my family's all-time favorite quiche recipes. So in my frying pan, I have about seven strips of bacon. I cut them in half so they fit better in the pan. I'm just going to cook them up. I do wanna mention if you wanna use sausage as a substitute of bacon, you certainly can. Or if you wanna keep this vegetarian, you could just saute up some veggies. Well, I have our bacon cooking up on the stove. I'm going to crack four eggs into this medium-sized bowl and whisk them up. Once they are finished being whisked up, I'm going to add two cups of milk to the bowl and whisk this all together. Once this is well combined, it is time to add your one cup of Bisquick. Once you do add that in, of course, you're gonna whisk this all together. Once it is smooth, you're gonna set it to the side. I have my nine inch pie pan right here. I'm just spraying it with plenty of nonstick spray. I chose to use avocado oil spray. You wanna make sure you do that just so the quiche doesn't stick. I added my bacon that we fried up on the stove. I just crumbled it into smaller pieces along with a half of a white onion that I diced into smaller pieces as well. For the cheese that I am using, I'm using about one cup of some Swiss cheese. If you don't care for Swiss, you could use pepper jack, cheddar, any type of cheese that you like go ahead and add that in and then I'm sprinkling some pepper on top I didn't add any salt just because this will be salty enough with the bacon lastly add the bisquick and egg mixture on top and this bakes in a preheated oven to 400 degrees for about 35 minutes Here's the finished product. This quiche came out so, so good. It had a ton of great flavor and it was really nice and cheesy. I actually meal prepped this for the entire week. So my family had a really quick breakfast to throw in the microwave when we were in a rush in the morning. Now we're making these cinnamon muffins. I swear my husband ate like five of them the first day I made them. Anyways, to begin in this bowl, I added my 3 fourths cup of regular sugar and two teaspoons of cinnamon. You're going to whisk these two ingredients together. Just add in your two cracked eggs at this point and whisk everything together until it's smooth. I do wanna let you know all of these recipes today are so, so simple to throw together. Anyways, now that everything's incorporated, you're gonna add your half a cup of milk in and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. You're going to mix these ingredients together. Then it is time to add in your two and three fourths cup of Bisquick mix. Once again, you're going to mix everything together until it's smooth. This recipe makes 12 muffins, so I have my muffin tin here. I actually lined it with cupcake liners just for some easier cleanup, and I just like using cupcake liners. Anyways, I'm just filling them at this point, and these are gonna bake in a preheated oven to 350 degrees for 25 minutes. Once your muffins are out of the oven, you're gonna work on your cinnamon sugar topping. Of course, this is optional, you don't have to do this, but my family loves it. In this bowl, I have a fourth a cup of sugar and two teaspoons of cinnamon I mix together. To place the cinnamon sugar topping on your muffins, you're gonna first dip your muffins in some melted butter. I just melted a fourth a cup of some butter. Of course, I didn't use all of that. And then you're gonna dip it over in the cinnamon sugar topping and that's seriously it, they're ready to serve. Here's the finished product. These muffins are so, so good. I could probably make them every week and not get tired of them. Of course, they are a denser muffin, so if you like denser type of muffins, I really think you'll love this recipe. I have made this recipe so many times in the past. We're making some impossible cheeseburger pie now. It is really good, you gotta trust me on this one. So in my pan right here, I have a pound of some ground beef along with one onion. You're just going to cook it completely through and drain out any of the excess grease. 
In this medium sized bowl, you're going to want to add in one cup of milk along with your half a cup of Bisquick. This is the Bisquick I've been using if you are wondering. They also make Bisquick in gluten free. If you are gluten free, you could use that. But anyways, now you're going to want to add in two tablespoons of Lipton onion soup dry mix and then two eggs. You're going to whisk everything together. I set this mixture to the side and I grabbed my pie pan. You're gonna spray it with plenty of some nonstick spray. Again, you just really don't want anything to stick. So now with our cooked ground beef and onion mixture, you're going to add it to the bottom of the pie pan and spread it out as even as possible. On top of the ground beef, you're gonna add one cup of some shredded sharp cheddar cheese and then that Bisquick mixture, just pour it on as even as possible. This is gonna bake in a preheated oven to 400 degrees for about 25 minutes. After it is through baking, you're just gonna let it sit for an additional two minutes just to cool. This is the finished product. I just served it alongside of some peas. My entire family loves this meal, especially my 19 month old daughter, Brinley. She always devours this when I make it. Also, this makes for some great leftovers for the next day. Now we're making some classic chicken tenders. I love this recipe, especially when I'm in a rush and don't really know what I'm gonna make for dinner. So to begin in this gallon size Ziploc bag, I added a little over a half a cup of Bisquick along with a fourth a cup of some grated Parmesan cheese. For the seasonings, I'm just using a little bit of some paprika, salt and pepper, and then you're going to shake everything together in this bag. I set this bag to the side and now we're going to begin on the egg mixture. So I have one egg, I'm going to crack it into this bowl and I'm just going to beat it. I'm only using about five to six chicken tenderloins for this recipe, just because my husband actually wasn't home on this night when I was making dinner, but you could definitely double this e recipe very, very easily. So if you wanna make more, go ahead and double it. But anyways, I just dipped the chicken into the egg wash and then I added it to the bag with the Parmesan cheese and the Bisquick. I just gave this a really good shake. I have my cooking tray right here lined with some aluminum foil. I also sprayed it with plenty of nonstick spray. I'm adding my chicken tenderloins on right now. Then you're going to drizzle a total of two tablespoons of butter on top. These are gonna bake in a preheated oven to 450 degrees for about 12 minutes and then flip them and bake them in the oven for an additional five minutes or until they reach 165 degrees internally. This is the finished product I served mine with some carrot sticks. These chicken tenders are so, so good. They are also extremely easy to throw together. So if you're looking for a quick meal, this might be the one for you. My daughter has been asking for banana bread for what it feels like is weeks now, so we're gonna be making this banana bread. In my bowl, I added two ripe bananas. Ideally, you want three bananas for this recipe, but I only had two on hand. I'm just going ahead and mashing them. To your mashed up bananas, you're gonna be adding 2 thirds cup of sugar, fourth a cup of milk, three tablespoons of vegetable oil, a half a teaspoon of some sugar, three eggs, and then lastly, two and two thirds cup of some Bisquick. You're just going to mix these ingredients together. This is the fun part. So I'm adding one cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips in at this point. Typically, I also add a cup of some chopped walnuts in too. I didn't have any on hand, but whatever you like in your banana bread, go ahead and add it in at that point. So now to my loaf pan, I'm spraying it with plenty of nonstick spray. I'm going to add the banana bread mixture in. This is gonna bake in a preheated oven to 350 degrees for about 50 minutes or until it is completely cooked through. 
This is the finished product. This banana bread came out so, so good. I just sprinkled mine with some powdered sugar. My little daughter Brinley was overly excited that I made her some banana bread. And that is a wrap of this video today. I hope you enjoyed it and found a recipe that you might be able to make yourself. I hope you guys are all staying warm and safe out there, especially this week because I know it is super duper cold in some of the states. But anyways, I will see you in my next video. Bye for now.